Germany start to work in one direction for win the war. Difference in uniform between Allgemeine SS and uh, Waffen SS. Okay. That Hitler told to him when he was in Italy that he had to take the Pope. Hello everybody, this is War Story Video Vlog. I am Alex and here we are in Max Show 2023 and here is Stefana Borghi. Hello Stefana. Hello. Stefana introduced uh, German Historica auction in Italy and uh, we have opportunity to interview uh, Stefana and we have a chance to film interview with awesome stuff. Uh, SS uniforms, SS headgear, SS helmets, SS uh, all kinds of stuff. And it's better to hear from Stefana because it's like huge event. For me, um, it's great opportunity to study SS stuff and to show it to you guys because uh, this is a three collections of uh, SS items. It's like lifetime collections, and I can film everything if you like it. And uh, we can ask everything about these items. We can compare uh, like models, compare uh, patterns. Yes. And Stefana, can you like tell us about this auction and about this collection? So we are and very, very proud to have this free collection. The first collection is come from California and there was a focus about Algemein SS stuff. Mm -hmm. The second collection was Dave Delich collection. It's one, I think, the best SS insignia collector in the world. He unfortunately passed away one year ago, so the family gave us uh, the collection. We split the collection in four parts because it's a huge collection, amazing collection. The third part is one Italian collection and also we split in three, four parts because or it was too much work also for us that you are yes, the sure. main auction house in the world for this kind of materials. So. But it was like a biggest, one of the biggest collections, right? Yes, uh, yes, yes. It was a very, it was a huge collection. It was really, really nice. So we are really proud. And we can start to show you this kind of stuff from the beginning. For example, we have this model mm -hmm. of cap. This was the first SS cap was Algemein SS. The first SS was wearing in black. Yeah. And uh, they start to become famous just in the beginning because they was really bad. Was the, the black side of the Nazi. Nazi is already black side, but it was like a worst part of it. So, yeah. uh, and, and people like to collect um, people, this stuff because of like... People collect this stuff not for political idea or something like this or for renovation or something, apologize. This is truly, people that collect this stuff are really history lover. Yeah. They love history. They love to understand what happened from 43 to 45 because it's easy to tell, oh, this is bad guys, we don't want anything that related about this yeah. period. No, it's wrong. We have to learn from history. We don't have to repeat the mistake again. We have this stuff help us to understand what really happened during the war. So, all the people that collect this stuff are really history lover. They won't understand. And from the beginning, they change a lot the uniform. All Germany start to work in one direction for win the war. And the interesting fact about uh, SS uniforms and SS headgear and insignia and all kind of SF stuff, uh, all this stuff uh, started to work against uh, SS and against Nazi right after um, American guys just uh, yeah. landed in yes. Europe because uh, veterans uh, brought back and sent ship 
uh, back to the United States all these items and uh, sisters, wives and uh, people just show and demonstrate this stuff as a war trophy, war souvenirs and uh, they collect money for military needs and uh, we know this museum in uh, Midwest and uh, in this Midwest museum we have like set of uniform with like assess everything with assess chain assess and uh, the period picture like wartime picture where wife of veteran collecting is collecting money uh, in front of this like assess uh, uniform the yeah. collection of this stuff starting immediately during the war, yeah. the soldier was fast when they have some prisoner yeah. for take first the better things. And this picture on your screen describes it very well because uh, you see some SS officers who still wear in their caps but uh, insignia from the, these caps already in GI's pockets. Yeah, yeah, wait, what's crazy? You have to consider when uh, Galland surrendered and the landing in the airport the american soldier ran to the plane open the plane and tried to take took his night cross yeah sure he fight for no this night cross you <laughs> can't have from me but they really want the gallant night cross because he was flying with yeah, his with, own with night cross parade, yeah. and he fight no you can't take my night cross mm -hmm. for example and and uh, when uh, the uh, GI come back in USA with the boat, on the boat, they start to trade. Mm -hmm. Because one have uh, five helmets, another have uh, one uh, side cap on uh, as like this. Yeah. Oh, I give you one of my helmet if you yeah. give me. And so immediately starting the collection of this stuff because these guys know the difficult to win against this boy. Yeah. And the best trophy was the SS trophy because it was the strongest soldier. Yeah, because everybody it was knew. young people that was learned from 10 years old yeah. to 20, like 25. Very your only mission is win the war. Your yeah. only mission is kill your enemy. Yeah, that's true. So this young guy don't have any idea of the world, of the true nothing. They only know Nazi. I have to win for my Führer. Yeah, but after the war, all their stuff, just most of this stuff, uh, has been brought back to the United States, and uh, nobody knew about uh, like all these like types or like Waffen SS or like Allgemeine SS. So uh, now we can show and now we can learn more about this organization, um, about this like headgear and uh, uniform. So let's start from the beginning. It would be great to show our subscribers uh, okay. models of uh, SS headgears, like from the beginning. And uh, one more uh, question from our subscriber. Difference in uniform between Allgemeine SS and uh, Waffen SS? Because it's like very good question, guys. Allgemeine SS in the beginning was a sort of a part of a Nazi party. So they start with this head that was black and the eagle on top was the Nazi eagle, party eagle. Only the skull described that way was SS. Also the style of the head is different because it is an old style, is a yeah, end of the first world war style. After this they so this is the same but for officer. The difference is very little because only the chin strap is different. This is chin strap for enlisted and NCO. This is the chin strap for officer. And actually it's very interesting to mention that uh, different insignia because uh, we can see here Eagle very similar like SA Eagle. Uh, mm -hmm. So they was very close in the beginning and then it was like uh, they got different uh, Eagle that was this More is, impressive. This is, this is the party eagle. Yeah. SA, SA were the party eagle. Uh, another uh, thing of this hat is the leather visor. The leather visor because it was the first type intended to wear like a side cap and put in the pocket or something like this. After this, I show you, this model was more elegant like a saddle, yeah. they start to produce their own eagle. 
this kind of eagle is produced only for the SS. And this skull is the final design of the skull because the first skull that we had in the first hat was Braunschweig skull, all the type from the Prussian army. Yeah. And then they start with a really SS skull. This is the final design for Allgemeine SS. Here, the SS was not more part of the party, Nazi party, but was an army. Mm -hmm. They was, they begin to... They became like they became army became unit. Like, army yeah. unit, elite unit. Yeah. Also, the training was different from the army. It was very, very difficult, it was very, very dangerous. A lot of young people died during the training mm -hmm. because they used real bullets. Yeah. And so, really? yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the MEG started to, <laughs> to okay, make I, fire. Honestly, I cannot say like, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't like regret that they did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. So it was crazy. My training with real bullet it was crazy because they think that so they raised mm -hmm. real warriors. Okay. It was crazy idea. You can't kill your, your, people during the training, but yeah, was that time. That and was this like... is the final design. In the same time, like we tell, start the Waffen SS. Mm -hmm. So the Black SS was a sort of party and uh, something to show to the world. Yeah. Then they have this unit and they have to wear of course, not black, but green or camo also, yeah. uniform and F. And this is a typical SS officer F. And the difference uh, comparing with like army and with uh, Wehrmacht is like this uh, black part of uh, incident insignia. The, the insignia are different from the army. Yeah. Army have a different eagle but it's very close to this, yeah. not the skull, but uh, it's uh, the color of the Prussian. So it was black, white, and red. Yeah. Only SS were the skull. And the Panzer unit, Panzer unit in Russian, when they surrendered, they take out the skull from the jacket because Russian army think skull SS. And yeah, it's like it was, corpse, really, corpse. was really bad for the yes. guys that the army, Russian army, think that you are, you was an SS. Yeah. So the tank, the tank unit was really army, and they don't want to go yeah, to, to the same, the same direction with SS units because people, not a lot of people know, but was not so good for the army have SS on the side yeah. because. Yeah, we you know we know the SS was really bad guys, and German army was proud to be uh, this old mm -hmm. like story tradition, tradition, tradition yeah, stuff. and we don't we don't want to mix with SS. Yes, it's for this tank unit was cavalry unit. Yeah. And they don't want that people think that we was SS. And actually, there is a one detail about uh, SS and Wehrmacht relationship. Um, SS a little jealous uh, to Wehrmacht because uh, they had different um, like supply commanders. You know, it was a very different supplies. For example, uh, if uh, Wehrmacht can get like normal weapon, normal um, MP40s and all that exactly. stuff. SS had a different line of supply. So they got uh, old um, submachine guns. Of gun and, all, all and, uh, yes. Yes. and yes. they a little jealous because they was elite, but at the same time they use like old police weapon and old police guns. Uh, so and, they don't yeah. have, they don't have, uh, uh, only during the war, Hitler started to give SS the same equipment. Yeah. In the beginning, they steal the equipment to the deport of the army. Yes, or in, uh, in or in, Czech. in occupied uh, country, they was the first to take all the material. And you see some a lot of SS uh, soldier that wearing 
captured stuff. Yeah. For example, this picture is very famous. Uh, it shows like assessment um, using PPCH, Papasha 40, yeah. and um, also there is a, like uh, SVT, Tokarev um, rifle, also they use uh, as a trophy because if they didn't have enough like um, yeah. automatic weapon. Imler, Imler uh, have the money and the opportunity to have the same stuff yeah. only yeah. during the war, yes. only after the first battle in Russia because it yeah. was really hard and uh, he needs true material for yeah. his uh, army, yes. That's true. So, speaking about those uh, caps, there is a difference between this one and this one and we can see uh, an, another, yes, another skull here. The, uh, the only difference is, is that for the reason that they don't have so many money for have the equipment complete, this officer used the old type skulls that probably was in the shop where he buy the, the head. Not for... He wanted to have this skull, the normal SS skull, mm -hmm. but he had to take this because probably was finished the normal skull. Mm -hmm. And so he, he buy the head, he buy the insignia because, uh, yes, some head was given from the army, but Normally, an officer buy a nice hat. Yeah. Was a lot of producer. The best one was Errol, the most famous, and then Picuro, and then a lot. And they go to the shop and yeah. it's like fashion. But they, people, they want to be really fashion. Yeah. But some people who grew up in uh, military families like me, uh, I know that uh, there are different officers and some officers really want to uh, be like shiny and they want to buy like good material and they... Ex exactly! Yes, but some of them use only uh, like government issue heads, government issue like um, stuff and uh, it could look like horrible but they don't want to spend any money for so, uh, their stuff. So th that's interesting. It's, uh, they, but different types of people. German very take care of the look, mm -hmm. and so most of the officer buy from the shop. Mm -hmm. For example, this general buy this hat, and you can see the quality of the material, the quality of the insignia, mm -hmm. because this was a general. The only difference from general and officer is the silver piping around the top hat. For the rest, is the same hat. Yeah. But you see, you can see the difference, the quality, and it's difficult in the video, but if you have in end, you see mm -hmm. the yeah. rule is completely different. And condition is also... Yeah, the condition yeah. is only... But this one, for example, about like price range, um, let's General one, the start price for our auction is fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand, and this one? This one seven thousand five hundred. You see, it's like twice uh, yeah. more because of the rank. But it's a like starting price plus uh, commission. Twenty-five yes. percent commission for uh, the auction house, yes, and it's only the starting price. Yeah. So yeah. we will. We will Eighteen October start the game, mm -hmm. and uh, we want to see. And this is another general, but mm -hmm. for the black uniform. Same story, nice material, nice shape, nice insignia, better than normal one. Yeah. And there is a SAS tag here inside. I usually not focusing on uniforms and headgear, but it's like really good uh, variety of material. So it's, it's cool and it's really nice experience to see it and like Great opportunity to, to touch it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. This is a great opportunity for everybody because this stuff are very rare. Really rare. So it's difficult to have so many stuff mm -hmm. in one time. Yeah. That's really, true. really difficult. It's close to impossible. We are if for this that we are proud. 18 October start the OR auction. And it's amazing to have so many stuff for sale. And uh, there is a tanker like beret yeah. here. Can you show it to us also? Yes, of course. 
we go there. Sorry, I have to close. Before the tanker beret, uh, there is a cap, old uh, type. Could you describe it? This this app is called coffee cap uh -huh. <laughs> because it's yeah, it's, it's like a it's like a cup for your coffee. Was used in the beginning. You see, the style is also old style. You can see in a lot of movies the Nazi party member that wear this, but in brown. Mm -hmm. So the first SS have want black. Mm -hmm. You see the, the insignia are the old insignia, party insignia, old style skull insignia. And this is also where from a very Allgemeine SS in the beginning. And extremely rare and is this, this is a protective hat for the Panzer tank, tank unit and it was made only before the war, when, when the German army have, still have the old tank, small tank, they need the protection for the head, because in this small tank you can't move and when you move you, yeah. Yeah, you take your hand everywhere. And it's really strange the design, it's really strange also the insignia because it's so big for, them, for an egg. Mm -hmm. And they produced for only a small period mm -hmm. because when they start to produce bigger tank, they, don't, they, they see that the protection they don't need. And so this was on the side and it was this that is really, really rare because mm -hmm. they don't use so much. During the war, they don't. You can see pictures only of parade before the war mm -hmm. of this kind of hat. And I also want to mention that it's not just a beret, this is a protection. So uh, this is a cap inside this beret. Yeah. Uh, it just looks like... Uh, yeah, because this is a cover. Yeah. The real... Oh, you can remove it? Yeah. Oh, great. This is... So the this is actually... <laughs> the protection. <laughs> yes, but it looks weird. So they, <laughs> <laughs> they uh, really look yes. weird. Yes. And it was the same for the army. Of course, the army on the top were the different eagle mm -hmm. and not the skull, because the skull was only for the SS. What is the starting price for this one? For this one, the yeah. starting price is uh, 7,000. 7,000. Yes. Okay. And this one is the... This one... Yeah is the typical hat for NCO and enlisted. Mm -hmm. Because see, of this trap. Exactly. And you see that this guy don't want to buy his personal hat. Yeah. He was happy with the hat that they, yeah, just the government the government they gave to him. Exactly. It's poor material, yeah. poor design. Also the insignia, you see that lose the silver finish. And this is a um, pot metal, right? It's zinc. It's, yeah, it's zinc. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's poor material yeah. that originally was painted in silver. Mm -hmm. But this type of uh, material lose the finish very, very fast. Yeah. So it's interesting. And also, uh, what, what is the starting price of this one? Oh. We already know price for like general, from for officer. 2,500. But it's also just a starting price because exactly. it wouldn't be... Uh, like 2,500 because of just the eagle and skull uh, in matching set cost like a lot uh, because like it's actually hard to find matching set because yeah. usually um, GIs like first thing that they just put on the pocket uh, just a skull. Yeah, it was a perfect trophy. <laughs> yes, yes. It was a perfect trophy to put uh, on the envelope, on the holster of the gun bag. or everywhere. Yeah. It, it was perfect for... Uh, yeah. For example, a friend of mine, he bought um, motorcycle uh, side bags, yeah. you know, uh, and uh, there was several pieces Skull of open signals. Yeah, yeah, it was a skulls and eagles uh, there, and uh, he removed it uh, and sold it like the separate, but there is a still trace on the yeah. leather uh, of this stuff. And you can, you can find everywhere. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's very nice. Uh, GI love to make also blanket. Yeah. Oh yeah. Full of insignia. Of yeah, it's a, it's like a hate belts uh, tradition Exa in, in, in England and uh, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. They really love to make this. So yeah. 
was the perfect uh, trophy because it was like so much trophies, so much insignia, and so much, uh, so many um, like medals and badges that uh, it was not enough uh, space yeah. in the belt. They just <laughs> take a blank. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and this one is interesting. You yeah. you told me it's something special. This is a female side cap. Actually, like I sure. didn't know that. Uh, it exists <laughs> it's like something uh, like yeah. separate material it's also so ss a female member mm -hmm. of course not combat but uh, like for the transmission unit of a supply unit and they use a lot of female mm -hmm. and they wear their own uniform and this was the had only for the female auxiliary. Did SS female members allowed to fight? No. What a sexist, right? <laughs> I, 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 or I, if, for what I know, no. But they had a lot of problem after the war. Oh yeah. Because that's, they was a member nice. of SS. Even girls who just related with SS men and uh, they got a problem in Italy. Or, in Italy, or, in Italy, a lot of problem with yeah, the partisan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In and the in, Finnish in of Balkans the and uh, like France. But but yeah. if a uh, girl was actually like SS member, she got a trouble. Yeah, got a lot of problem. So, but they they used female member. Yeah. Okay. A lot of people don't know because in the modern uh, army, female started yeah. 20 years ago. No, before was nothing, and now they had just that. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the army have uh, female units for transmission and supply units, and not only uh, hospital. Uh, what is the name? Uh, yeah, it's like nurses. Is uh, exactly. Yeah. Because uh, it's pretty normal for like uh, Israel army. Uh, no, yeah. For the Israel army, it's absolutely normal. Yeah, and yeah, the yeah. female and members. Not, yes, and it's not just uh, like signal corps or something. No, they are no. actually soldiers also. The next part is the uniform. Like the hats, the Germans start with the black uniforms that w was used for the parade. This is is a very high rank SS officer with his own tunic, the pants with the white stripes, mm -hmm. and who's uh, what is the rank of this uh, officer? This is an Oberführer tunic. Mm -hmm. Oberführer, uh, like the start price five, as yeah. I think is pretty high because. 8,000. 8,000. 8,000, yes. And with this kind of tunic, the high rank officer and the general also have for the special event for summer or something like this, they have white tunic. Mm -hmm. You can see especially when uh, the uh, general visit foreign uh, country and something like this. Mm -hmm. This tunic belonged to Karl Wolf. Karl Wolf were SS generals. He was in Italy in the 44. As a lot of funny story around uh, Karl Wolf mm -hmm. and his personal tunic. You can see how many decoration mm -hmm. yeah. he had. If we find the picture of uh, this guy with this uniform, we can you can see it on your screen right now. Yeah, and a nice part of this cell is that in the pocket we still have a personal card of Karl Wolf that write that this tunic belonged to him mm -hmm. and it was put in auction in '74, where oh, wow. originally. The collectors buy, so it's and October personally, Carl Wolf mm -hmm. signed his personal card that this tunic belonged to me. Mm -hmm. So it's very nice for collector have the proof of the provenience mm -hmm. of his stuff. Yeah, that's true. That's really nice for every collector.
And you told that uh, there are some funny stories uh, behind this general. Can you share with so, like maybe one of them? One of them is that is impossible to prove because nobody knows okay. that Hitler told to him when he was in Italy that he have to take the Pope mm -hmm. and bring in Germany. Okay. And he said, no, I can't do it. But this is only legend around because nobody knows the truth, for sure. No paper is around this. Mm -hmm. I think that Hitler tell to him, mm -hmm. and maybe he tells to someone of his staff, but it's true, it's not true. Yeah, it's, and many legends. Uh, yeah, uh, many legends around the Second World War. Yeah. It's like the legends when Otto Scorsini go to Gran Sasso to liberate Mussolini. Yeah. And you know that on the plane, with Mussolini, he was in the back. Mussolini, Scorsini was a huge man. Yeah. And the pilot tell to him, hey. Yeah, you gotta go. Is, we are too wait. I don't care. You have to fly it with me because Mussolini fly it with me. Yes. I have to, to show him. to the yeah. world that I was the man. Actually, actually, like uh, one and a half year ago, I was there. I was in this Grand mountain. Sato. Yes, and uh, I saw this hotel, and um, it was amazing. Actually, it's amazing views <laughs> there, and you can see on your screen this hotel. Me, I, I was like pretty freeze there because downstairs, <laughs> like uh, it, it was like pretty hot, but. On a mountain, it was and like... You uh, can see the face of minus. Mussolini was, he was not so happy to be... Oh, liberated. yeah, yeah. He was just in... <laughs> he was just in uh, vacation. I know, it's the end. For me, it's the end. Uh, okay, the war is ended. Okay, yeah. I'm in vacation. I was not happy to see Otto yeah, Scorsini but... in the unit that take to Germany. And uh, yeah, the story is that you have to make yeah. Republica di Salò. Over two years of war, mm -hmm. we have civil war in Italy because... Yeah. Part of Italian was with the uh, American uh, mm -hmm. army, the other part was with the German. So it was the two worst years of the yeah. war for us in Italy. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And actually I was in uh, Salerno, okay. and, uh, on the place where uh, landed. Americans landed. Yes, and uh, there is a museum there. And uh, I'm going to publish this video really soon. And um, then I drove to that place in mountains and this super pretty village there. Yeah, uh, yeah, this, it was so cool. Uh, it's uh, also a very nice place for a vacation. Yeah, <laughs> not, yeah, not only true. for the history. That's true. And you see how many black uniforms. The difference as yeah. only the yeah, yeah officer enlisted, mm -hmm. but as very close one to the other. The only one that is really different in this black is this that is, you see, is an evening uh, tunic. Yeah, there is no, you see, shoulder no bones. shoulder bones because it's more elegant. This is for a student and Führer, is also high rank mm -hmm. SS officer. It's very elegant. This is something like dinner jacket mm -hmm. for official dinner with oh, okay. some stuff. So uh, yeah. it's a, you see, the, the cut is really... Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. And instead, uh, black uniforms, I see combat uh, tunics and... Uh, it combat tunic, we can start from officer tunic. Like the hat, you see that the quality is very nice. 90% of the officer tunic are tailor-made mm -hmm. and not for government supplies. This is, we see, is Hauptsturm für... Mm -hmm. And this tunic cost 9,000 euros starting price. He's a captain uh -huh. in a normal army. He's a captain of the SS and uh, well done. You can see the calf title. Mm -hmm. Every SS unit had cuff title because we, they was really proud of the unit they, mm -hmm. they was. And this is a SS Polizei Division. This is SS Polizei and, um, Division. SS Polizei Division, um, combat like very close to my native city. It's like maybe 30 minutes away from the um, place where I actually was born um, in Leningrad. In Leningrad area, they was like really close to St. Petersburg airport. From St. Petersburg airport, they was like uh, almost on like airfield. And uh, okay. yes, and, and some, uh, 
German uh, trenches still under the uh, like landing um, say, like landing, landing field. You okay. Know? Yes, uh, because it was like two of them and second modern uh, landing field uh, has been constructed right on the trenches. So um, I know guys and I can also interview them how, my, how much stuff and, they got from there. And so here you one. can see the difference mm -hmm. between the quality of the officer one and for, to the enlisted. Yeah. This is wall captured in Italy. This is Italian wall captured mm -hmm. and use it for make SS uniform because just tell they was they don't have material they don't have uh, to, 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 government. to clarify uh, this is a um, wool that's Italian uh, wool yeah this is Italian wool this is Italian uh, artificial silk for the liner and the quality is really poor and is all not. Italians now uh, will say what do you mean quality is really poor is <laughs> no, no, if it's quality, in Italian <laughs> no 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 okay <laughs> yes, it's I don't mean I don't mean <laughs> also the quality yeah, yeah. also of the wool is really poor yeah. is if you you don't touch but if you have on you all the day your yeah, if you your neck is destroyed it, your skin is destroyed because it's really rock yeah yeah and the um, difference between uh, like SS uh, tunic and uh, like regular army tunic, not only in uh, material, it's also with like uh, different number of holes for hooks. It's like two of them, right? Yeah, exactly. Yes, and uh, there are some more uh, difference. The like, eagle of the, of the army yeah, tunic was uh, on the breast and not on the arm. And here you can see that this guy was a member of uh, Adolf Hitler unit, Leipzig Adolf Hitler. Also, this is the yeah. senior of uh, Leipzig And price starts from like 5,000 euros. With the trousers. Euro. 5,000 euros. 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 Yes, it's a With German historic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. yes but... And this is the really last model of tunic that the German made. You can see the difference. They were, it's really short, mm -hmm. it's really easy to produce because during the war they need to make faster and cheaper stuff. And so this is absolutely the last. And we start from the first officer tunic that I show you, that it was really well made, really nice, to this that is really poor. And this is for like regular soldiers, not for uh, tanker units, not for shooting Absolutely not. Yeah. This is uh, the last model, cheap and fast produced. But uh, piping is... Yeah, the piping is uh, for... Uh, this man was a driver in a tanker unit, okay. but not a driver for the tank. Yeah, just... Um, yes, exactly, like for the commercial truck, vehicle. for the truck, for the yeah. car, for, maybe for the bike, who knows. Yeah. But uh, this insignia is, it was a driver, in a panzer unit, a tanker unit, yeah. but that don't mean that it was on the tank, to because be only you, only small part of the tanker unit was on tank. Yeah, to be honest with you, I wouldn't like to be like a driver of any vehicle in 1944 or 1945 in Europe because it's like completely uh, it has been completely covered by uh, allies. Um, aircrafts, yeah, yeah. And so everything that uh, they can uh, was really see dangerous. They, was yes. really dangerous to drive yeah. uh, somewhere. And um, one collector who is actually son of the Hayat leader, Hitler Youth leader, um, he his father uh, told him the story like in very the end uh, of the war he drove motorcycle and uh, he uh, saw fighter or like thunderbolt on the sky and uh, this aircraft uh, saw him and start to like chase him to yeah, kill the, this yes and uh, it's it was like completely uh, clean like field and only one bridge was there and this bridge saved him it was like um, almost like May 1945 in, in Germany it yeah. was like where is the end uh, and it was like impressive story about it and uh, actually another story from that guy about also related with the SS people, uh, he was a uh, Hitler Youth leader and uh, he had order to keep all like young guys and put them on the cross road 
um, in front fight of, and stop the enemy yeah, to, to stop Americans. Yeah. Um, they was around like one hour away from this crossroad, but um, he wanted to just let them go. Uh, because they are kids and he knew that uh, this like Kalum just destroyed them because uh, it's you know yeah. it happened yeah, yeah. a lot but assessed man uh, came and he pushed uh, all these like young guys stay on this crossroad until then yeah. but few minutes before Americans shown up uh, he just ran away that assessment uh, so yeah. he had a chance just let them go, <laughs> yeah. go yeah. Uh, yeah. so it was like happy end in this uh, side but it was also like uh, 1945 yeah so so and, and uh -huh. this is the last part of the uniform is the foreign volunteer in the SS SS used not only the material take from the captured country, also they take a lot of, of volunteer. Yeah. This tunic belonged to Estonian volunteer. Mm -hmm. And this one is was originally one summer police tunic. Is in fact is is stamped PO, that's the police, police mm -hmm. 43, and it takes this uniform change the insignia and put the Estonian flag, SS Eagle, normal SS rank insignia, SS, but with their, their own Estonia volunteer That's interesting. color tabs. Yeah, and it's they, actually like metal insignia. Yeah, exactly. This is metal. Mm -hmm. Exists in two types, of course. Yeah. Metal and embroidered. Yeah. This, in this case, we have em the metal one that is the better is uh, mm -hmm. is for sure is yes metal is always better yeah, than, uh, it's, uh, it's nice it's, yeah. it's nice and yeah this is the last part of uh, the ss yeah. unit that they had and how much is this one I just curious like five thousand euros is a starting price exactly it's like plus 25 percent as it could be like more than yeah 60. but I, I i can't believe that you can have for your starting price mm -hmm. Because we will see. I have. I actually have no idea uh, how much uh, cost like uniforms or like side caps because um, I mostly like uh, like metal stuff, and uh, my main focus was in uh, uh, like daggers and medals and badges and uh, all stuff made by metal. But this is very interesting term and very interesting auction, and I uh, want to learn more about uh, like close items. And uh, thank you for. Uh, describing all this stuff. Yeah. So thank you for showing all this stuff. You have great display uh, here and uh, I have great opportunity to come to uh, German Historic office uh, that is here in United States, this USA part. Yeah. And uh, I would like to show you more items uh, from this collection because we have great opportunity to see it, to touch it. Uh, because like most people cannot just come here and uh, see it, watch it, so we can learn it we can study it for free <laughs> so uh, that's cool and also thank you very much for thank reading. you alex thank you thank you thank you thank you guys for watching this video until the end and thank you guys for uh leaving comment and uh press subscribe button and bell button right uh, this small button don't uh miss next our uh videos so what else can i say have a good one and see you real soon